Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about what's called caudal autotomy, also known as tailbreak. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former zookeeper and lifelong reptile enthusiast, and you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, a place where I can share my passion of keeping and breeding blue tongue skinks and a few others just for fun. Hey guys, caudal autotomy or tail break is a common occurrence in many species of lizard. It's a wonderful and amazing adaptation that these animals have developed over time to um, survive predation. It's an antipredator defense and it's pretty, pretty fascinating to be honest with you. So what happens is these animals have developed along their tails break lines or fault lines if you will. Um, places that are weak points, um, sometimes it's in between vertebrae depending on the species, sometimes it is um, in the vertebrae themselves of the tail where these animals will actually um, be able to drop or break their tail and shed it in, um, in case of uh, extreme duress. So if the animal feels like they are being preyed, preyed upon or if you grab them by the tail and they're trying to get away and they feel like the only way to survive is to drop their tail, they will be able to initiate a, a break. And so there are some like weak spots along their tail where that can break away and then you will have a tail and the skink will go off or other lizard will go off and um, survive. So geckos do this, even some salamanders do it, tuataras do it, um, anoles do it, and skinks do it. So our Taliqua does it as well. I mean, don't you, baby? Um, and, and it's kind of a cool adaptation. One time I was um, out collecting umeces for a research project for an entomology department. Um, umeces is the five-line skink, umeces fasciatus, and now it's a different name. Sometimes they call it, um, I can't remember, but umeces. Uh, fat, so it's a five-line skink, little guy, bright blue tail. And we were out collecting those, and we ran across a, uh, a glass lizard which is a legless lizard in the US. And um, I thought it was a snake. I knew it wasn't venomous. So I grab it, pick it up, and it, it initiated its caudal autotomy, its tail break, right in the middle of my hand. And so the skink, the lizard went one way its body and the, the tail went the other way. And it like, so what I, what I had thought is I was holding a snake and it exploded in my hand. I didn't grab it tight. It just initiated it because of the anti-predation um, uh, survival triggers but holy cow did I scream like a little girl because I was not expecting that and it is a very effective uh, mechanism in the wild it worked on me I let go and I was like ah! and I can imagine what a predator might feel uh, or think but um, what happens when it happens to us in captivity so like this little female here while she was traveling to her first owner um, she was in the box and she ended up dropping part of her tail and you can see that it broke right there and this is her regenerated tail. It's much shorter, it should be about yay long, but it does look nicely shaped and she looks like a cute little compact skink. Um, so it can happen in captivity. So first things first, whatever caused it, you want to try and remove that. If the animal just freaked and dropped it randomly, um, you can't help that much, but if it was during a breeding session, um, you need to end the breeding session. If it's a skink to skink interaction and you've got a skink that's biting another one and they're cohabitating, you need to house them singly in that case. Um, also, if you know for some reason the animal's tail gets snagged up on cage, oh, you peed again? What is with you, you little pee monster? Um, cage, uh, decor if cage decor gets gets them uh, snagged up then you want to rearrange that move that decor you don't want to cause another safety issue for any skinks so um, remove that second uh, you want to take out any substrate that's loose in the enclosure and just go with like paper towels newspaper butcher paper um, or even a bath towel as substrate until the actual open wound um, closes over. I also recommend putting a little bit of polysporin without lidocaine. No pain relief medication can go 
can be added topically onto this because those have proven to be deadly to reptiles. So you want to avoid that specifically, but you can put polysporin that doesn't have that on there to help facilitate the healing process and keep it um, from getting a bacterial infection. Now they're designed to survive such an event in the wild, so it shouldn't be too significant of a medical issue. However, if there's an incomplete break, so part of it's still attached, you're going to need to go see a vet because they may have to help with the amputation piece and they will still regrow it. They can still regenerate their tail. Not to the full length like this one, but it still will regenerate um, for the most part. And then, um, or if it's really close to their butt, really proximal, you want to definitely seek a vet in case there's profuse bleeding or um, significant lipid loss because if you see here, um, a lot of a skink's um, fat is stored in their tail. Not as much as a Gila monster or a fat tail gecko or a leopard gecko, not at that extent, um, but it is a fat resource. And lipid storage is where animals keep their water, it's where animals keep um, excess nutrients, and so those can be lost in, um, and if it's lost in a really quick manner, it could be a traumatic event. No, sweetie, we're not going that way. Yeah, we're not going that way, baby. Um, and I'm going to put you down and pick up Lydia here. Um, so here's another skink. Female. Also. Lost her tail. Now the younger one here, um, the younger one I just put down, lost it as a juvenile. And you can see that the regrowth was much uh, more, um, I don't know, it looked prettier. So hers was regrown as an adult. She lost hers in a breeding incident. And you can see that it's just a little bit malformed. But it grew back, nice little point. So I've got two little compact skinks here. Yeah, you guys can fit in any parking size spot, huh? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> they're great animals. They still survive it. Um, so put that little bit of ointment on there. The muscle folds are gonna cover up the, the, the bone and it should scab over and just keep them clean. Make sure they're keeping uh, with good nutri nutrition because that's going to help with regeneration and um, hydration because they've lost some access to some lipids um, to their fats which holds some water so make sure they have good hydration. You should be doing that anyway. But um, And then if you when in doubt, seek consultation with a vet. But for the most part, these guys are designed to survive such a thing. Very cool, very beautiful animals. And as always, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share this video with someone that may have had that experience. And um, let me know what you think.